All right, we're going to get to the viewer questions here in a moment. But I thought I would share with you a story that happened recently. It's the middle of winter here, and it seems that we're having snow like every few days. And freighters getting a little stir crazy. And it doesn't help that I have Mars conjunct my natal Mars at the moment. So I did some simple magic to be invited to some event in an attempt to alleviate this. Nothing specific. And so a couple days later I get this email inviting me to be a guest on a podcast with 100,000 subscribers, 50,000 Twitter followers to be interviewed. Which is cool and could really be a boost for this channel, but that's not really the type of event that I was intending. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to do that or not, um, but the guy was kind enough to leave it as an open invitation if and when I decide to do that. And if so, then I will let you know. So in this particular case, it was both a success and a failure. It was successful in the fact that I got a result, and a pretty good result, but it was a failure in that it wasn't the intended result. I wasn't specific enough with my intent. And so the lesson here is <laughs> never leave it up to your subconscious to assume that it knows what you mean. You know, I just intended to get out of the house and go do something because there really hasn't been much of anything going on lately. Not to just sit around the house and do more of what I've already been doing, even though it has the potential to greatly benefit me. I had talked about in the last mailbag how magic will present an opportunity to you for you to seize upon when the opportunity comes. And had the result matched up with my original intent, then I would have done so. But for now, I feel as if I'm sitting around talking too much as it is, because I'm also working upon the next pay program. Perhaps when all that's out of the way, it could be something that I would decide to do. We'll see. I don't want to waste any more time. We have a lot of questions to go over. So, let's get into it. All right, this first one comes from someone who has just started getting into this type of material and magic, had a mental breakdown and started experiencing otherworldly things, and was left wondering WTF and wants to know what's going on. But the truth is, I don't know you um, or your circumstances. Are you on any medications, for example? nor do I know exactly what it is that you're doing. And so my recommendation here would be to back off for a while and only focus on the mental exercises, such as rejecting your negative thoughts and accepting your positive ones, and stick with that over the course of many, many months. You may not just be at the level where you can handle all of the input, because truth be told, many people can't handle this type of work. It doesn't mean that you're crazy, it just means that you have more mental training and work to do than other people. You wouldn't expect someone with weak muscles to be able to go in and bench 150 pounds right from the start. He's going to have to gradually and physically work up to that. Much in the same respect, you're going to have to gradually create the neural pathways so you don't shatter your mind. This is another reason why I tell people not to take in too much information at once to actually take the time to digest it and internalize it. Mental indigestion is not a good thing. So in my opinion, you need to just back off of it for a while and focus on training your mental faculties. Thanks for the question. All right, this next one comes from a guy who wants to do the self-initiation course of Kabbalah, magic, and the great work of self-transformation, but is afraid that his wife is going to freak out. He says that his wife is not religious, nor does she believe in any of this type of thing. And I'm not sure why she would care then. 
it's kind of like those atheists who get all bent out of shape when someone else believes in God. It's like, well, if you don't, then why do you care? How does it affect you? But he's convinced that she's going to freak out to the point where he thinks it's going to be a choice of 23 years of marriage or doing what he feels he needs to do. This is one of those moments where I really can't stand the YouTube content ID system because I would totally play the song. Move, bitch, get out the way. Get out the way, bitch, get out the way. <laughs> but all jokes aside, it's going to have to be done uh, with kid gloves. You have to be very, very careful in your presentation of what you're doing. The occult and magic have a negative public connotation to it, largely thanks to Hollywood horror films and ignorant misconceptions. It's just the way people are programmed. You have to understand that they are programmed to freak out. And because this programming is based in the subconscious mind, you are not going to be able to approach her with logic. It's going to be the same as a phobia, basically. An irrational fear. So, first thing, you cannot use words such as occult, magic, etc. Anything that's going to trigger that opposition programming. Instead, use words like meditation, experiment. Yeah, I saw this thing on YouTube and I think it's bullshit, but I want to try it out. You know, see for myself. I need to meditate. Please don't disturb me for the next hour and a half. Self-hypnosis. Because I want to better myself to be the best person that I can be. But you're going to need to avoid discussions on the occult altogether. Ideally, you guys would have different schedules. So that she isn't home all the time where you can get your training in. But if not, you're going to have to find a way where you can get that hour or so alone to yourself. And not be interrupted during your, quote, meditation session. Which is true, you will be meditating through the curriculum. But as with all good Gemini deceptions, it's what you're not telling her. You know, the moment they start coming around is when your little experiments begin to work. You know, and work in a big way. But just starting out, you have no results to show yet. You know, my girlfriend is totally aware that I do occult magic. And that I teach it. But when I first started out a long time ago, this is what I had to do. I knew that it had to be approached and framed in a certain way to avoid an objection. I didn't think she would freak out, but I thought that she would strongly object because I understood the programming involved. I knew that if I brought up occult magic right out of the gate, I would be done. I'd be done, son. It would be over before it began. Your wife wants safety and security. And how is she going to feel that when she's thinking that you're conjuring demons and opening portals to hell in the spare bedroom? Again, you could thank Hollywood and the church for that. You know, these control mechanisms to keep people from developing their own personal power. So you're going to have to approach it lightly. And you're also, and this is very important, you're also going to have to not act like it's a big deal. You've been with your wife 23 years. She's going to know when you're up to something. You cannot treat it as a big deal because if you treat it as a big deal, she's going to treat it as a big deal. Well, I'm just going to do my little meditation on my sigil drawing here. Well, what are you doing that for? That's weird. I don't know. Da, 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 da. Well, whatever. I mean, it's not a big deal. You don't have to overreact to everything. My goodness. You know, brush it off. So you're going to have to have a hell of a poker face. <laughs> you're going to have to have a nonchalant, I just want to try this and see, it's not a big deal attitude about you. And if you can do all that, then you can gradually work your way into it becoming a magic thing. You can start to explain that your meditations are setting intentions and how the subconscious mind works, and that you're competent in what you are doing, evidenced by your results. The bottom line is she wants to feel safe and secure, and she's not going to feel that way unless there's evidence to the contrary. 
she's going to have to feel that you know what you're doing. So I hope that this helps assist you in the challenges ahead. And I appreciate the question. Thank you. Okay, so this next person says that usually when he asks the question, that it's answered right after he asked it. So it works. And yes, it does. But there was something that he hadn't had answered where before he had gotten into magic, he was meditating on the nature of reality and had this revelation of polarity that everything negative has a positive and he touched his two index fingers together and basically started having a seizure freak out or something <laughs> says he was high at the time and hasn't happened since but still has these episodic moments where his body freaks out racing heart sweats muscle spasms and then he gets scared and then it stops he wants to know if this is normal or if he should go see a physician to which i'm going to reply go see a doctor <laughs> because anytime anyone's going to give me a choice of whether they need to go to the doctor or not i'm going to tell them to go to the doctor i have an obligation to do so i cannot not give advice to go see a doctor if that is a concern i would also lay off the weed you do know that weed can make some people very paranoid and i'm not saying that that's what this is but you do have a lot of the symptoms you are also meditating on the nature of reality which i kind of warned about that it's been known to drive people mad <laughs> you may have broke something so, you know, you don't want to become a paranoid delusional. I would lay off the weed and when it happens, get in the habit of rejecting it. Rejecting those thoughts that occur while it's happening. Also, get yourself some sort of self-hypnotic relaxation trigger that you can use when these instances occur. You know, um, you kind of freaked out your mind. And that trickles down into your body. Everything begins in the mind. So if your mind's freaking out, you know, don't be surprised when your body starts freaking out. You know, I used to partake in a little herb too when I was younger. But eventually it started making me paranoid. And I gave it up. You know, I used to have problems with racing heart when I tried to go to sleep and things like that thinking that I was going to die and everything and that's when I got into rejecting my negative thoughts and then all of that stuff went away so I would suggest something similar but I would also go see the physician just to be on the safe side and thanks for the question all right I'm going to get one more quick one in I had something come up and even though it's not too terribly bad, uh, it is going to put a crimp in my schedule. It's actually going to throw it completely off. <laughs> and I'd rather put out a short video than no video at all this week. Always trying to move the ball forward, even if I have to inch it forward. All right, so this final one comes from an artist who likes to do occult artwork but is concerned that doing the art is breaking the silence and is also having difficulty not telling friends about the occult. <laughs> you know, and I've said it before that we are expressive beings and art is an acceptable form of expression on getting these things out. It shouldn't be a problem unless you're simply drawing I love the occult and displaying that for all to see in which case you may want to work on being a bit more obscure. The word occult means hidden anyway, and so if you want your artwork to really correspond with the occult, you should keep the occult theme somewhat hidden within your art. Does that make sense? And as for telling your friends, again, you should put your expression into either your art or another outlet, including doing more magic. The more expression you can put into your magic, the better your magic will be. Save it for the things that really matter. The entire comic book um, series, The Invisibles, by Grant Morrison, was one big hyper sigil that he used. And no one was the wiser for it being a work of occult art. 
So there you go. And I appreciate the question. Thank you. So as I said, this mailbag is running short, but it's a mailbag nonetheless. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for sending in your questions and for supporting this channel. And I will see you next time. Take care.